From looking at his filmography, Denis Villeneuve is a director that has yet to make a bad film. With films like Polytechnique, Incendie and Enemy, it's as almost as if the French Canadian has drawn out a blueprint for making films that entice, engage and enthrall the audience. I then stumbled upon Prisoners, a 2013 release that went under my radar due to films like Wolf of Wall Street and American Hustle taking over my social space. Suffice to say, the second the credits started rolling, Prisoners instantly became my favourite of 2013 and certainly garnered a place as one of my favourite films of all time. The wages of sin, guilt, vengeance and redemption weigh heavy on the characters, each nailing their persona to a T. Hugh Jackman gives a powerhouse performance as Keller Dover, a Pennsylvania contractor, survivalist and recovering alcoholic whose six-year-old daughter goes missing on Thanksgiving Day. He's matched by Jake Gyllenhaal, who's exceptional, haunted and haunting as Loki, the obsessive cop who isn't acting fast enough for Keller. Supporting performances from the likes of Paul Dano, a disturbingly chilling culprit caught in the middle, and Terence Howard, giving a great performance as a heartbroken father, gives the film its emotional intensity. The two-handed story follows both Keller and Loki on their radically different missions to find out what happened to the missing girls and the film glides back and forth between the two narratives beautifully. The mystery itself is captivating from the very start, the plot ramping up fast from the opening and completely overcoming the daunting two and a half hour runtime. When looking deeper however, the film depicts one's drive and determination to leap past the rule of law in order to seek out loved ones. The human condition is seen in both Keller and Loki and is what Villeneuve highlights throughout showing the dark depths both characters go through to grasp the very thing that makes the world revolve. We, as humans, will do anything for the people we love, but when the line blurs between right and wrong, when we throw our moral compass out the window, is when we see our own dishonesty come into play. This is where the film's themes of torture, faith and morality are portrayed through the visual motifs, the score and Roger Deakins' beautiful and bleak cinematography. Keller is characterised as a devout Christian who places his family in his highest regard. We can see this in the first scene of the film, where he recites a prayer before the sacrifice of a deer. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. We can also see more Christian symbolism in the form of a cross inside the truck and a carefully placed sticker on the back of his car. His love for his daughter is shown in various shots within the first few minutes to build a sense of togetherness. This is done to set up the disturbing nature of the story. When his daughter disappears, the feeling of closeness is shattered as seen by Keller's progressive rage and confusion to the whereabouts of his daughter. The absence of responsibility becomes a reality for both Grace and Keller. Grace, why can't you make her go home? I don't understand. I don't understand it. Keller sets out to take matters into his own hands because it feels as if the investigation is wasting precious time and becomes frustrated at the law system. He is a survivalist who thinks he can be in control of anything. Villeneuve wanted to show two forces colliding to achieve one goal. Loki represents law and order in society, while Keller embodies the outlaw, who has a problem with the establishment. Keller does not think highly of Loki, always looking down on him as he thinks he is incompetent and ignorant. He then later comes to his level as the case progresses, and then at the end, Keller is literally below Loki needing him to lift Keller from the darkness into the light. On the first day of meeting Alex, the cross in the car is tilted sideways, showing that his faith is beginning to dissolve. In comparison to a similar shot with his son, the cross is on full display, showing Keller's stronger faith. The hamster seen at the start of the film is white, but as Keller delves into his immoral actions, 
the hamster later becomes darker in colour. This shows the transformation from a holy man to a sinner. Jackman's acting is deeply harrowing and heartbreaking, while portraying depth and range in his emotions. It is also noticeable that when Keller gets angry, Franklin succumbs to his rage. Hugh Jackman does steal the hammer scene in an insane fit of rage, but focus on Franklin in the background. Tell me. He stares into Jackman's eyes, emanating his hopelessness, a man who knows no answers but to follow a man breaking the law. The dream sequence Keller has foreshadows the eventual rescue of his daughter. The whole represents the final testing of his faith. Holly Jones' final intent was to kill the girls, so Keller is now in his darkest mental prison. He is helpless, lost and in pain and is facing his own death. After he finds the whistle, he feels the same closeness to his daughter before she was taken, and his faith in humanity is restored, leading him to be saved by Loki. This scene is shot in pure darkness, illuminated by a timid light showing how minute his hope and faith has been. Roger Deakins creates this aura of redemption by creating a private space in the darkness to allow Keller to connect with his thoughts and prayers. Oh, Almighty God, protect my girl. Jake Gyllenhaal's intricate performance is the other half of the film. He manages to bring in Detective Loki's dark past and mix it in with the confines of the law culminating in an interesting dynamic of his past life and professionalism clashing during dramatic scenes. We are introduced to Loki with a dolly shot from behind. This specific shot is repeated three other times to connote a piece of evidence that is right within his reach. We see Loki few feet away from the car in this shot. He is about to stumble upon evidence after his fit of rage in this dramatic scene. At the end, the camera stays still, sending the film off to a gradual close. These shots are iconic when you think about it, with the camera pushing in to feel the pressure that Loki is experiencing. Whenever Keller prays for help, Loki appears soon after. This can be seen after Alex's torture, when Keller is down on his knees. The juxtaposition between the shots feels as if God has sent Loki in the path of Keller. When Keller prays for his daughter in the end, Loki comes to investigate and eventually saves her. We can see how, at the start of the investigation, he only cares about the logistics instead of the family. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, we appreciate your cooperation. With Keller's inner torment and anguish, Loki becomes personally involved in the case, as he even takes note of Keller's phrase. So with all the survivor gear in there. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst. Just found some dead snakes and shit. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst, yeah. The only way in which the case can be put to sleep is when Loki finds closure. His drive and unique ability to solve any case is illustrated in his meeting with Keller's daughter. He is not satisfied, he wants to find the final piece of the puzzle. Loki has various tattoos, which shows us that his mysterious past is a notable facet of his character. The tattoo on his neck is an eight pointed star, which symbolizes chaos. In Christianity, the star is representative of baptism and cleansing, which can indicate the spiritual rebirth Loki must have had before becoming a law-abiding detective. This is commonly linked to the story of Noah saving seven people on his ark. A verse from the Genesis states, In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the son of Noah, and Noah's wife, 
and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Like Noah, Loki is faced with saving and repairing the lives of seven people affected by the same event. Franklin, Nancy, Joy, Keller, Grace, Anna and Alex. Craig Wright, a professor at Yale University, wrote a book titled The Maze and the Warrior. He states that a saviour figure typically led the way along this harrowing spiritual path. This figure is Detective Loki. But since Keller isn't on a straight path to salvation, neither is Loki guiding him. Keller's moral compass knows no balance, meaning that Loki becomes the figure that saves him. Loki needs Keller to be his eighth person so that his arc can set sail. Mazes play a significant role in the film, with many illusions and signs being in reach of the characters. The maze in the film represents the pilgrimage of life, death and rebirth Keller is unknowingly taking part in. Like many holy journeys, the destination is of moral and spiritual importance. The first step is life. Keller's home and family is safe and complete. Death strikes and his home is in shatters when his daughter is taken. With Rebirth, we can see that Keller becomes a demon amongst men, as his immoral actions lead him down a path of despair. Keller needs to change and must be granted salvation in order to return to the world as a man. Finding the whistle in the finale gives hope to Keller and allows him to gain his faith back, which is why I think he is saved at the end, to complete a journey from the perspective of a devout Christian. Snakes are seen at Taylor's house, which is a clear representation of evil in the Christian dogma. We are told that the father of one suspect kept snakes, the same person who had abducted 16 children. He locked the snakes away in caskets, creating a kind of Pandora's box of snakes and evil in an attempt to lock away the evils of his past. Loki, of course, opens the box and lets the snakes free. Another frequent visual in the film is that of the single eye. After being tortured by Keller, Jones has one eye that is bruised so much that it's permanently shut. In later scenes, he is filmed so that the light falls only on his one open eye. And during the climax, Loki's character is shot just over his left eye, so that the blood blinds his vision. In Nordic mythology, the god Odin gives up one eye in exchange for wisdom. In the film, Jones is a character who, from start to finish, knows and is willing to divulge the location of the missing girls. Gyllenhaal is shot near the eye when he discovers a girl, showing that wisdom comes with its price. Now, show me your fucking hands. Do not move and show me your hands. Make sure they cremate me and shit so I don't want to be buried in some box. Both hands, right now! Right now! The reason Prisoners ranks so high up on my list of favourite films is partly because of its cinematography. Roger Deakins is a master of light and shadow, and the way he conveys the atmosphere of rural Pennsylvania makes the audience feel the coldness, misery and passion of the characters. Deakins makes the camera feel like a person, like someone is watching the case unfold with every move. He positions objects in the foreground to create the sense of realism to make the audience peer into the lives of the characters. There are scenes which are shot from a distance, through glass, to reinforce the idea of separation between characters. Roger Deakins teaches us that cinematography isn't necessarily about the placement of the camera to get the best possible angle, 
but it's about enhancing the story and finding the way to make a moment or an emotion more beautiful, more intense and more powerful. The contrast between beautiful aesthetic and the dark, gritty story is absolutely stunning. It is easily one of the most visually pleasing films I've ever seen. <laughs> Finally, the title itself, Prisoners, can literally mean the physical confines of Alex, Keller, Bob, Joy and Anna. But Keller is also a prisoner to his pride, ego and way of life. He is a prisoner of his own self-reliance and suspicion of everybody else. To add some additional symbolism, his father was also a prison guard. The Birches are trapped by the complicity in Keller's plan and their rather submissive relationship with him. Once they condone the torture of Alex, they are unable to get out. Many find the maze aspect of the film to be more of a red herring than anything. Although there is no literal maze, I find it to be a psychological maze where both Keller and Loki have to seek out clearness in their mind to gain control and attain a better understanding of the situation they are both in. Prisoners deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as Seven, Mystic River and Silence of the Lambs. Villeneuve takes his unflashy time building character and revealing troubled psyches in the most unlikely of places. The character studies he presents us with give no clear cut answer for difficult moral questions which enables us, the audience, to question the actions from the characters. His work with the exemplary actors results in a film of startling impact filled with emotional intensity that will keep you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. Action fans are better off sticking with the Taken series, but thriller and drama enthusiasts should find plenty of powerful performances and rich story material to make prisoners an exhilarating and penetrating experience. I personally can't wait to see what Villeneuve has in store for the new Blade Runner in 2018. Prisoners is certainly the best film of 2013, and I give it an A plus.